Chapter 3 of Iracema, The Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar. Translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 3 The stranger followed the virgin through the glades. When the last sun rays fell upon the crest of the mountains, and a turtle dove cooed forth her first lament from the forest depths, they sighted upon the plain beneath them the great Taba. Farther on, hanging as it were from a rock under the shade of the lofty Juazeiro, the wigwam of the Pajé. The ancient man was seated at the doorway upon a mat of Carnaúba, smoking and meditating on the sacred rites of Tupin. The gentle breath of the breeze fluttered his hair, long, thin and white, as flocks of wool. So statue-like was he, that life only appeared in his hollow, sunken eyes and deep wrinkles. The pajé descried, nevertheless, from afar, the two forms advancing, he thought, towards a solitary tree, whose dense foliage was casting a long shadow adown the valley before him. When the travellers entered the deep gloom of the wood, his eye, made like the tiger's for darkness, recognized Iracema, and saw that she was followed by a young warrior of a strange race in a far-off land. The Tabajara tribes beyond Ibiapaba were full of a new race of warriors, pale as the flowers of the storm, and coming from the remotest shores to the banks of the Mearim. The old man thought that it was one of these warriors who trod his native ground. Calmly he awaited. The virgin, advancing, pointed to the stranger and said, He came, father. He came well. Tupin sent this guest to the wigwam of Araquim. And thus saying, the pajé passed the calumet to the stranger, and they both entered the wigwam. The youth took the principal hammock, which was suspended in the center of the habitation. Iracema lighted the fire of hospitality, and brought out food to satisfy hunger and thirst. She produced the spoils of the chase, farinha water, wild fruits, honeycombs, wine of the cajou, and the pineapple. The virgin then went to the nearest spring of fresh water, and returned with the full igasaba to wash the stranger's hands and face. When the warrior had eaten, the venerable pajé extinguished the cachimbo and spoke for the first time. Thou comest. I came, replied the unknown. Thou comest well. The stranger is master in the wigwam of Araquim. The Tabajaras have a thousand warriors to defend him, and women without number to serve him. Let him speak, and all will obey him. Pajé, I thank thee for thy hospitality. As soon as the sun shall be born, I leave the wigwam and thy prairies where I strayed. But I would not leave them without telling thee who the warrior is whom thou hast made thy friend. It is Tupin whom the pajé serves. He sent him a guest, and he will take him away again. Araquim has as yet done nothing for him. He does not ask whence he comes, nor whither he goes. If he would sleep, may the happy dreams descend upon him. If he would speak, Araquim listens. The stranger said, I am of the white warriors who raised a taba on the banks of the Jaguaribi, near the sea, where dwell the Pichiguaras, who hate thy blood. My name is Martin, which in thy tongue means son of a warrior. My race is that of the great people who first saw the lands of thy country. Even now my brethren, routed and beaten back, return by sea to the margins of the Paraíba, whence they came, and my chief, abandoned by all, crosses the vast regions of the Apogee. Of so many I alone remain, because I was amongst the Pichiguaras of the Acarau, in the wigwam of the valiant Pochi, brother of Jacauna, who planted with me the friendship tree. 
three suns have set since we went forth on the hunting path. I lost sight of my friends, and thus I strayed to the prairies of the Tabajaras. It was some bad spirit of the forest that blinded the pale-faced warrior in the darkness of the woods, replied the old man. The Kawan chirped at the other end of the valley. Night had set in. End of chapter 3